I'm Patrick Egan, publisher of the Agile Journal. We're here at the Disneyland Hotel in Anaheim, California for Star West 2008. The show has really been outstanding. I've, you know, I've got to meet a lot of the speakers, I've got to meet a lot of the delegates, and you learn as much from both. I've got delegates who tell me all kinds of interesting problems they have to solve. I've got speakers who are telling me about all kinds of new techniques that they know how to use and they can teach me. I've really gotten a lot out of it. But I think testing is just part of software engineering. It's not something that you do sort of by itself. It's built into your life cycle model. Testing is done two months after development is done. Since development is never done, testing is never done. <laughs> How do I find, testing is subjective? Of course. We're gonna you know, ask four testers a definition of testing or how it should be done, you'll get 10 different answers. The big challenge I see for testers today is really balancing automation versus manual testing, exploratory testing versus regression testing. The different kinds of testing activities that you've gotta do, you need the right blend for your app. And so figuring out what that blend is and then doing it at the right amount consistently, that's a real challenge for, for a lot of organizations. The big questions that are coming up today, I think, are focusing. Trying to figure out what of the multitude of billions of possible tests that we could run that we should focus on to add value to our community, to our project, to our teams. I think that's a big one. There are a lot of people who believe that testing can be done by anybody. It's, it's not perceived by some people to be a highly skilled occupation, and I believe that it is. But um, we need to raise that perception, and I think we, there are a number of ways we need to do that. Business and software changes are constant and continuous, and it puts a real stress on the testing and the testing environment. And uh, I think people are really looking for innovations and new approaches to keep pace with the, with the rate of change. I see a lot of companies that are responding to customer needs around uh, making automation easier, um, getting tighter control on the process, um, and helping to institutionalize and standardize how people do things in, in companies. And you know, it's not 100% tools, it's not 100% people, it needs to be a nice mix. And I don't believe there's one tool that can solve the problem. We use quite a few, um, each one solves a specific uh, issue we have. Because when you're talking to testers who see agile testing mostly in terms of automation, listen to what they say and, you'll, and they'll always talk about tools. Oh, I use Fit and I use Fitness and I use Jester and I use all this stuff. And they always go to tools, 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 tools. As opposed to talking about skills. To me, the core of testing is skills. And that's, that's what I try to focus on. And to me, that's the true agile skill. So the Agile movement needs to smarten up and stop enforcing the practices and process and tools and so much and putting them on a pedestal and blaming people. They should be putting the people up on a pedestal and they should be looking at how are these tools and processes empowering the people and helping them use their skill using their intellectual capabilities, their cognitive cap capabilities. The best thing that uh, any tester or test team can do is to make sure that before they get too entrenched in what they're doing, they understand not just uh, the mission that they've been given, but the underlying reason behind the mission. As testers, we tend to focus uh, on our uh, seemingly internal desire for perfect quality. Uh, the truth is that we all uh, work for companies that have missions themselves. We're bringing software to market for a purpose. And the purpose, unless you're in pure research and development, probably isn't perfect quality. And so truly understanding what's going to make the business and the application a success uh, before we get uh, focused on what might turn out to be nitpicky details instead of true business problems uh, will really help focus your testing throughout the process. Set up a workflow, no matter what your life cycle model is, so that you're constantly watching these things. Get the core values in line and encourage testers while they're testing to continuously come up with new ideas. Not just bugs, not just reports, but really, really new testing ideas. Then you're triaging them based on some sort of a decision-making you know, model you've set up beforehand. And I believe that is the way to tackle the question, how do you finish? Because we could keep testing 
forever. So it's always an economic activity. So I think that a lot more should be spent on emphasizing how we decide what not to test from a pool of, a rich pool of testing opportunities. What not to test as opposed to focusing on what we should test. The tool vendors, first of all, need to talk to people who've been there. They need to go down, work with testers on teams, find out what the needs that need to be addressed are, and work their way up rather than top down. I think uh, automated tools are a fabulous assistance that I want to use. I want to be a cyborg tester. I want to have tools embedded in my brain. I want microchips in there. I want to be like RoboCop tester. I definitely want tools. I'll use tools like crazy. But I don't confuse testing with tools, with what the tools do. Testing is not what tools do. Testing is what humans do using tools. That's my distinction.